So if you want to elevate your design from something bad like this to an awesome design like this, well, you're in the right place. In this video, we're going to see how you can differentiate between a bad UI design versus a good UI design so you can elevate your skills and become a better UI designer. So as a designer, the first aspect that you should actually focus on is minimizing interaction. So here I've got two examples. One from the left hand side is the bad example versus the good example. So we're going to go through and actually see the difference between a bad UI design and a good one in terms of minimizing user interactions as much as we could. So for the bad design in here, we got like a simple web page where we sell products. And let's imagine we're selling in here, like we've got like an e commerce store or something, and we're saying like a keyboard. So we got this keyboard page in here for like the Asus, ROG, Asus, 75% uh, wireless keyboard and all of that. And it's, it looks like a normal page, right? It, it's pretty good. It has the listing of the keyboard from this side and some you know pictures in here so you can see the keyboard. So everything is good from that side. But the most important part we need to focus on is actually the user interface where the user is actually going to select the type of the product, like selecting a color, for example, the quantity that it wants to buy, and actually finally click add to cart so they can actually buy the products we're offering. Of course, when we design our user interfaces as designers or as developers, we want to actually maximize efficiency of the users when they come to the web page, we want them to always buy. So like we want to have like 90%, even 100% of all the users that come through that web page and actually view this Asus keyboard, we want them all of them to actually buy. And we should maximize that by using a better UI and actually minimizing as much interactions as we could. So starting off in here with the selection of the color. So selecting a color in here, as you clear in here at the top in here, it might seem it's actually really fine, but it's not because when we select the color in here, it's actually a drop down where you have to click, like you have to do a one click in here to actually open the drop down. Then the second click is actually going through that list and scrolling and actually looking for all the colors that are available. And for example, oh, I want to choose white or blue. So I click on that. So that's actually a second click. Then the user goes down for the corner in here and tries to select the quantity. The same thing for drop down. It actually opens the drop down. Then he does one another click. So like three click in here and you have to do the fourth click to select the quantity from two to whatever, you know, he wants to choose. And last but not least, he goes for the click to actually add it to the cart. So in order to be able to add a product to the cart, choosing the color, quantity and everything, you have to do at least five clicks. So five clicks in here, it's actually the minimum clicks the user needs in order to add it. I know there's actually defaults. Some of you may say, oh, there's default, but let's imagine like 90% of people are actually going to choose two keyboards, or maybe they don't like the black. Most of them like the white color of this keyboard. So that's actually an issue with the UI. Now, instead of doing that way, we can go with a good one in here. And the good one is way much simpler. And it actually introduces a different type of like user interfaces or user controls that allows the user to have less clicks. So instead of having a drop down, now we can have like three buttons in here or as many colors as we have. So where we can just go ahead and actually click on that. And that just like one click, that's it. And of course, it defaults to black, for example, then you just need one other click to select a different color for the quantity in here, you got like two buttons right away for you in here, you don't need an extra click, you don't need to open the drop down, you just click whether you add or you subtract in here, you got the price in here in front of you, of course, that's actually a second click. And the third click in here is just adding it to cart. And one another bonus in here is actually adding a buy button. If you notice those websites were adding you near like a buy button next to the add into cart for those people who wants to immediately check out, they don't want to actually add to cart, they want to just buy this item, get away with it, pay and get it off. So that's actually another good experience, actually a good way to provide a quick checkout. So they click the buy button here, they take into the checkout, they pay, and they're done. This is like basically another really nice use case. But with this user interface, we minimize the interactions to only three instead of actually having it in five. So the moral story, always, always try to minimize interactions in your user interfaces as much as you could. And the second aspect that you should focus on is typography. Well, this might seem a little bit less interesting, but believe me, typography is one of the main aspects and important parts of a good UI design. So if you have a nice font, you choose the colors right, you know how to choose the sizes, the different sizes, spacings, and layouts, you're basically 90% done with a nice UI design. So the first part we need to discuss is paragraphs. So for example, let's imagine we've got this landing page in here. It's a normal landing page where user actually lands, he finds, you know, the hero title in here, whatever you call it, like the main title in here. And it finds a small description paragraph in here tells him more about the products we have. For example, this for designing 3D 
key beauty with AI and you can do it almost instantly. It actually allows you to create amazing or mesmerizing 3D designs with AI and you can transform concepts and yada, yada, yada. So it's more of like a description of what your service is, which is pretty important part. Then another button in here, just for the users to get started and actually sign up and start using the service. Maybe they want them to pay subscription or something like that. Now, what is exactly wrong with this design? basically the long lines because this paragraph in here should not be like longer than the actual title or maybe just a little longer but it shouldn't be as long as the size or as the width of the web page instead of doing that you should limit the size to something like this where you only always always for paragraphs have a maximum width that is way much smaller than the actual width of the screen unless you're doing it on mobile of course but this is more of like you know uh, a larger screen in here so you should always limit that because this text in here is very very hard to read for people like you have to take your eyes from like all the way from the left like you read this create mass rising then you go all the way to the right in here in order to read it then you go another line and yet yeah so like your head keeps rolling and rolling which isn't actually great but instead you could actually be a lot simpler and design looks super super clean and very easy to read for the users now this paragraph i can go through the different lines quickly like create mesmerizing 3d designs i can quickly go through that and actually scan through this and read it without actually had taken my head all the way around the web page. And this looks a lot more cleaner, of course. So always put this rule when you have like long paragraphs, always limit and put a maximum width on the actual paragraph size and not let it be the same width as the web page. Unless of course, as I said before, you have a smaller screen, like a small tablet or maybe a small mobile device. But other than that, you should always put a limit. And it's basically the same thing for another design in here where we have the paragraph, very long paragraph. But if you see from the other side, when we limit the width, in here it looks a lot easier to read and a lot lot cleaner and the second part is for font yes you heard me right font is a very crucial part of any website any design you're doing so choosing the right font or the right typeface is actually a very crucial part of designing a nice ui and eventually building a nice website so let's imagine we've got this landing page for our healthcare sort of application and here you see everything looks good. But of course, the first thing that's gonna actually attract your attention is basically the font that we're using in here. If you look a little bit closer, the font we're actually using in here, it looks more of like a terrifying sort of font or like a scary font that could be used in horror movies or something. Where of course for the health thing, it, it's really not that great. Of course, it makes it look terrifying because if you read that closely in here, we are ready to help you, no more pain. So if you like read this, no more pain using this fun it seems like you're playing a game or something or somebody is gonna actually hunt you so this will basically convert nothing literally nothing will bring zero conversions to you know the your healthcare application because the fund that is actually used in here is absolutely terrifying and people are so much terrified to use your application they don't want to actually have pain right but on the other hand, if we choose the right font in here, this is more of like a peaceful font. And if you look at the font we're using in here, we're using Poppins, which is a very peaceful, clean font in here that is actually way much better. But if you look back to the font we're using in here, it's more of like Gripster in here that should be used in horror movies or something. And of course here, it looks way much better. The conversion rate is gonna be higher. The font looks so clean and it makes people who come and visit this web page in here, they want just to go ahead and say, Oh, I'm super relieved. I feel confident about this service. I'm just going to go ahead and click on this button in here and start working. So that's a really another valid point that we miss out as designers. And the third aspect that you should focus on are layout and spacing. So we're going to start off with like grouping and spacing exactly and how you can basically use spacing in your favor to have a cleaner design. And actually as a designer, you can convince a particular ID to the users telling them by just using a specific space style that which items belong to which which items are clickable and these kind of things and the same thing goes for grouping as well so let's start with this landing page of a shoes sort of website where it allows you of course to sell different types of shoes I mean, it's a really well designed website with a really nice landing page in here. But if you scroll down a little bit in here, you're gonna find like where people or users are gonna be able to view the list of different shoes that are currently available, which one, for example, have a discount or something. And of course, when they can like click on add to cart in here, they can add it to cart, or maybe they just wanna view more so they can click on something like the cart in here and they can view and actually scroll down in here just to view the full list. Everything looks pretty good, right? But I mean, if we zoom in a little bit in here and look a little bit more closer, 
So this is basically a list of different like shoes, right? And each one has like a picture of a shoe. It has like the name of the shoe in here, the price and the rating from the different people who bought the shoe in here. I mean, everything looks good, but if you just took a little more closer look in here, we have like so much spacing in this, like between the actual title of the shoe and the actual picture of the shoe in here. And there's nothing that groups these together to tell us that this are part of the same item. So our minds automatically actually assume that this part in here, because it's a little closer to the bottom sort of like shoe picture in here instead of the top one, that this belongs to this instead of the top one. So this, I mean, when we read it, we just imagine that this is basically what it looks like the card of the shoe. So this basically the name of this bottom shoe instead of like the top one, and it makes it really, really hard. But in fact, of course, this belongs to the top one in here. But because there's so much spacing in here, it really doesn't make sense. And it makes it really hard to tell exactly what is the name of that shoe. And it makes the design very, very hard to read follow up for users. And the same thing goes exactly because these are not grouped together in like a card, they don't have like a border or specific something that actually groups the whole shoe item in here into a one condensed thing like grouping it into a container or a card or something, it makes it really harder to know exactly that these are actually a different shoes laying around in here, a list of shoes that each one or each row in here and each column is actually representing a specific shoe. So in the contrary, if we look into a different example, like the good example that actually puts similar items aligned together and actually similar items are next to each other. So it uses like less spacing for similar items and more spacing for distinguished items. So if you look right into this design in here, it looks a lot cleaner. And just by looking at it like one second after looking into this one, immediately realizing that these are actually a list of different shoes, each shoe is actually on this card. And I know exactly the name of the shoe in here, I know exactly the price, the rating immediately, I know that this particular details or the name and the price and everything belongs to the above shoe in here, the picture in here, I know this discount is actually belonging to this, so I know everything I know each shoe in here is actually separated from the others It's basically a list of shoes. And there's no much of space in between this. So it's actually very nice. And everything is grouped together in this really nice card with some shadow effect in here that makes it pop off a little bit. So that feels a lot better. And of course, we have so much space between this on top and the space between each shoe listing item and the other we have so much space in here, each of these cards actually distinguish and difference from the other card. So each one is actually separate from the other, which is a very nice design. Now, but just looking into this, any user who looks into this one and comparing it to the previous one is going to immediately tell you that this is a lot cleaner, easier to read, and they would choose this design every single time. And the same thing in here goes for simplicity, because always, always try when you're designing something and putting your eye together, always go for the simplest solution possible. So again, we have got like another landing page in your website for renting homes or something. And imagine we just like going through in here and telling exactly people after after they landed the web page in here, we tell them exactly what was service we have the different navigation bar and, and or navigation links and stuff. But if we scroll down in here, we want to tell them more about exactly what services we have and exactly about our home. So to give them like the features of our but if you look into this one, it looks pretty good, right? It may seem you know, just decent when you first look at it. But the thing that actually makes this wrong is actually because these are like contained together, they have like so much border and like a shadow and they put together into cards where they don't need to. And when you look to the whole web page from a different perspective here, these by just putting them into cards in here, actually grouping them together, this makes them like stand out. When we like land in here, the first thing we actually notice, most of you are going to notice these cards first, instead of like noticing the, you know, main area where it should be noticed, like the hero section in here, where users should basically read first and interact first with while these are not really important information. These are just like information we want to tell the users about it just like tell them a little bit more about homes features and stuff, but it's not the most important part in the web page. But because we're just grouping them together in here, it makes it seem like it's actually the most important part. Now for the better approach, we should just go ahead and remove all the containers just to make it a lot simpler and make them stand down less because we don't need that. So if you go into this better design as Chris in here, this is way much cleaner by just removing the containers that we're having in there. But like, for example, each card in here was having a container that just makes it stand out a little bit more. We don't need that. We just want to actually lay down this, we give them a description exactly about our cozy homes, we tell them why it's actually cozy in a very small and brief description in here. And we give them a button here to see all the listings, for example. And actually, now when you look into the web page in here from, you know, 
a wider view from an actual user perspective, the first thing that actually gets your attention as a user is actually this hero section in here, of course, button because it's orange, then I actually start scrolling down, actually noticing this because they're not very standing out. If I want to know more, I can just go and read them out, but I can completely ignore them and actually just keep scrolling down. So simplicity is key in this particular design. So anyway, guys, that was for differentiating between a bad UI design and a good UI design. And what are the aspects that you should focus on when doing UI design? So eventually you can have really nice, clean designs. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and catch you hopefully in the next ones.